Welcome to this video on the complete introduction to Excel Power Pivot. My name is Ian Littlejohn and I'm with Data Insight Training. So in this video, what I'm going to be looking at is how does Excel Power Pivot help Excel data analysts? So if we look at Excel, normally as a data analyst, we have to use one table when we're working with pivot tables. However, what we're going to find is that Power Pivot is a very powerful database that we can use. So it can work with millions of rows of records. It can work with relationships between tables. And it also has its own formula language called DAX. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can work with Power Pivot and how it fits into Excel. But let's get stuck into the video. Let's show you how this all works. First part we're going to be looking at with Power Pivot is the actual activation of it. So please note Power Pivot is actually a separately licensed product for Excel. So you've got to make sure that you have the correct licensing that does include Power Pivot. And the way that we can check is just to start with a blank workbook and we can go to File and we go down to our options. And within our options we've got something called Add-ins. And if you go to the Add-ins tab, you go down to the bottom over here, it will say Manage Excel Add-ins. We want to say we want to manage the COM add-ins. Once you've got the COM add-ins, you just click on the Go button. And over here then it will show you whether or not you actually have Power Pivot as an option. If you do have it as an option, please select it, click on OK. And then what will happen is Power Pivot will then be activated in your toolbar at the top over here. So once it's been activated, you can click on Power Pivot and you'll see then we'll get specific options that we're going to be learning a little bit later on in the video. But for now, we're just going to use the first one, which is the Manage button. And this will open up what is called the data model. In Excel, it is kind of used interchangeably between Power Pivot and the data model. Both words are often used, but Power Pivot is actually the data model for Excel. So we're going to click on Manage, and that's going to open up our Power Pivot window. Okay, so you'll see that the Power Pivot window has now been opened, and it's been opened within our Excel. So it does open up a separate window. You'll see that down with your Excel, you'll have a window for Excel and a window for Power Pivot. So the two can be open at the same time. What you'll see at the top is that we've got a set of options for bringing some data into Power Pivot. At the moment, we have no data in Power Pivot. So that is why the blank screen is currently being shown. So in this case, we're going to bring in some Excel data. So we're going to go to From Other Sources, click on that. And this will give us a list of the different data sources that we can actually bring data into Power Pivot. I'm going to go right to the bottom because at the bottom we've got our Excel file. And we're going to be bringing in some data from Excel. So we're going to click on Excel File, click on Next. And it will ask us what is a file path and also do we want to use the first row as a column header. So I'm going to select that and say yes and also browse now towards the correct file. Okay, so we found the correct file. I'm going to use Training Sample 2. All I do is just select it, click on the Open button and you'll see now that it fills that in. We're going to click on the Next button. What that will do is it will go through the Excel file and it will look for any sheets of data or any tables of data that it could then bring into Power Pivot. So in this case, we just have the one table of data and it selected that. So we're going to just use that, that one selection. We're going to click on Finish. Please note over here is a Preview and Filter button. So if you want to preview your data, you can actually click on this and it will actually open up the data over here. And you can see then the different the data before you load it into Power Pivot. What's really nice here as well is that you can unclick these buttons over here if you do not want to bring in a field. It's very easy to filter that. And say, for example, you only wanted to bring in, bring in one specific business segment, you could click on this and say, I actually only want to bring in the bikes data. So very easy to filter the data coming into Power Pivot. I'm going to click OK there. I'm going to accept all the data and click on the Finish button. OK, so that's finished loading now. We've got success. We've loaded all the rows and those rows now you'll see will be populated into my Power Pivot data model. So you can see now at the bottom over here, I've got my table name, Training Sample 2. I've got my records, one of 60,919. Now please note with Power Pivot, you can have millions of rows, so you could have uh, a lot more rows in here. But for now, we're just going to work with a smaller data set. Now, the first thing that you'll notice, it very much looks like an Excel table. So we've got our different fields over here. We've got our different filters as well. So if you wanted to apply a filter, you could say, I only wanted, again, to see a specific business segment. So you only wanted to see clothing. And you can see it looks exactly just like an Excel table. And we've now got our filtered data at the bottom. You can see there's only 12,293 of those records. And you can combine these filters. So if you wanted to say, I wanted to see this, but only for a specific sales date, you could say, use your date filters over here. And could say, I wanted to use before a specific date, after a date, or between dates. 
And you'll see that you've got your tradition Excel other options as well, tomorrow, today, and yesterday as well. So you can do quite a lot of different filtering. So over here, we've got a list price, unit price, and order quantity that we're using. And again, we could use our numeric filters over here. So if you wanted to look at your numeric filters, you could then use those, and that will give you less than and the greater than and equals types of options as well. So in this first part now, we've just loaded the data into Power Pivot. What we want to be looking at now is what do we do with this data and what are the things we can look at. So we now have all of our data in our Power Pivot data model. A key question is though, how do we actually analyze this data? How do we make sense of this data? So what we're going to be seeing is that we're going to use Excel pivot tables to be able to analyze this data. So what you'll see at the top over here in our ribbon is a pivot table option. So you'll see that we've got pivot table, pivot chart, and then a combination of charts and tables or four charts, for example. Now I'm going to leave you to experiment with those different ones. I'm just going to show you an example here of a pivot table and a pivot chart being created from our power pivot. So in this case, we're going to start off just with a pivot table. And what we're going to look at is we've got our order quantity over here. And over here we have our subregion. So our subregion is actually our country. So we're going to take our order quantity and our subregion. So first step is we're just going to create a pivot table. And it'll ask us where we want to create it. So I'm going to say actually existing worksheet and I'm quite happy with that. So we're going to click OK. And you'll see now it'll insert a pivot table for me. So we've got our pivot table fields over here for the, the table that we've got. And you'll see that I've got my subregion. So I'm going to use that in my rows. And let's go down and look for our order quantity. There's our order quantity. Let's place that in our values. So you can see now I've got my sum of my order quantity for each of my different countries. It's a nice simple pivot table and easy to see. Now, a couple of things that I might want to do if I'm looking at this data at the moment, I may want to number format it. I may want to have commas. And the way that you do that in your Power Pivot is actually you go back to your Power Pivot. And in this case, I'm just going to go back to the window. But what you could do is you could also pick Power Pivot over here. Click on the Manage button, and it will also take you back. If you want to go back to Excel, you can also use this button over here, which is Switch to Workbook. Or if you go down to your taskbar, you will see that you'll have two windows open at the moment for Excel, one for Power Pivot and one for Excel. OK, now that we're back in here, I'm going to go to my Order Quantity, and I'm just going to select the column. And what you'll see over here is my formatting options. It works very much exactly the same as Excel. So if I want 1,000 separator, I just use my comma. And you can see now that it's now got two decimal places. So if I want to reduce my number of decimals, I'm going to click on this one just to decrease my number of decimals. And that now removes my decimals, so I have no decimals. Now I'm going to go back to Excel. I'm just going to click on this button over here. And you'll see straight away now it applies a new formatting to the field. So once you've set up your formatting once in Power Pivot, you don't need to do it again. It'll automatically bring that through. Okay, so this is just a, a simple pivot table over here with our sum of order quantity and our different countries. But what happens if you, say, want a chart? So we're going to go back to our Manage Data Model. And again, we're going to use Pivot Table over here. But this time, I'm going to say I want to create a pivot chart. So let's say I want to do the same data. So I'm going to go to Existing Worksheet. And let's select, say, over here. And we're going to select a ra uh, range is fine. I'm going to click OK. So now enter straight away a pivot chart. Now, if you're used to using your pivot tables, you'll know that you can only create a pivot chart from a pivot table in normal Excel. Whereas with Power Pivot, you can actually create pivot tables or pivot charts just like this. So this pivot chart doesn't need an underlying pivot table underneath it, which is really nice for our analysis. We don't clutter up our analysis with unnecessary pivot tables for our pivot charts. Okay, so let's say we want to create the same pivot chart. We're going to use the same data. And that's no problem. We can just use our pivot chart fields over here. And we're going to again say we want to see subregion. And again, we're going to see our order quantity. So we'll go down, get our order quantity over here. And you can see by default, it automatically creates a column chart for me. And that's great. I can do a bit of editing. We can maybe remove that legend. Don't really like those buttons over there. So remove those. Could even give it a title over here. Let's call it quantity, order quantity by our subregion. Okay, there we go. So now we've got a nice table and we've got a chart showing us the data. But what happens if we wanted to make this maybe a little bit more interactive? Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, especially on Excel, you will see that we can use a nice feature called slices 
to actually make our charts and tables very interactive. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just choose the table and we're going to go to our pivot table tools. We're going to go to our analyze option and we have insert slicer. So I'm going to choose insert slicer over here. And what we're going to say is we're actually going to create a slicer with business segment. So slicer is a really great tool that allows me now to filter different data. But in this case, what I can do is that I can actually take my slicer. If you, if you just run it now, you'll see that it will actually now filter the order quantity for this table over here. But you'll see that my uh, graph over here has not actually changed. So I can easily filter that. That will work. But I'm not doing anything with the graph. So we want to change that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on our slicer. Let's remove our filter over here. And let's go to my options and my slicer tool options and go to report connections. And report connections now, you'll see that I can link actually my slicer to a chart and a pivot table. So in this case, they're both in the same sheet. I'm going to say OK. And now you'll see then that this will now actually change as I'm using my slicer. Both my graph and my table are easily changing. Next part that I want to look at is how do we do custom calculations and formulas within Power Pivot. So we're going to do this within the actual Power Pivot itself. So let's go back to Power Pivot. Let's go back to our Manage option over here, the data model. And if we look at some of our calculations, we can see over here we've got an order quantity, we've got a unit price and a list price. Now if I wanted to find out what is my sales amount, I could take my list price and multiply it by my order quantity. That would give me my sales amount. If I took my order quantity multiplied by my unit price, that would give me my cost. And if I took my sales less my cost, then I can actually create also a profit column. So you'll see here, what we're trying to do is actually basically do a calculation at each row here that will produce a result. So I want to take the order quantity and multiply it by the list price. So this will then produce a result in this cell over here. So the first part is we're going to add a new column. I'm going to double click on the column and we're going to give it a new name. I'm going to call it sales. Now please note in Power Pivot that we work with field names. So everything is a field name. Whereas in Excel, we could work with a range. We could say A1 to A15 or B1 to B16. But in Power Pivot, it's all field names. This is a database, so we're going to be working with fields. Now when I click on the cell underneath over here, you'll see at the top here we get a formula bar. Very much like you've got in Excel, same type of formula bar. And it says equals. So what does sales equal? Well, in this case, I want to take the list price and multiply it by the order quantity. So I can actually click on the list price. And you'll see straight away it takes my table name and the list price field. The list price field is always enclosed in square brackets. So you're going to see that wherever there's a field name, it's always enclosed by square bracket. But let's pick the field name and it says, OK, equals that field. Now what I want to do is I want to say, OK, fine. I want to take that and multiply that now by my order quantity. And again, I can click on my order quantity and you can see then I've got my calculation. Training sample 2, this price multiplied by training sample 2 order quantity. Got the two fields. I can press enter on this now and it does the calculation. And you see that we get our sales amount. Again with this now, what we could do for the field is we could apply formatting. So I could say I want to see this thousand separated and we're going to not show any of the decimals. Now please note that the decimals are still being stored and they will be used for calculations. But when it comes to formatting and showing them in our pivot table, it has now removed those decimals so that we don't have the decimals within our reporting. Because quite often when we're working with big numbers, we don't really want to see the decimal values. Okay, let's go back to our Excel and see how this has changed things. So I'm back in Excel over here. Let's go back to my pivot table over here. And we're just going to bring up our pivot table field list. And we've got a training sample 2. And we move down to the bottom now. And you'll see that we've now got a new field called sales. So sales just appears just like any other field in your data source. So when I click on sales now and I drag it down, you'll see that it now gets added to our pivot table. And it's calculated just like any other field. Okay, let's just do that again. Take sum of order quantity out, actually. And then we have our total sum of sales for each of our regions. And you could see the same. I could do the same for my graph. I could take order quantity out here. Go to this one there. Pick sales. And now we would have a graph showing the sum of sales for each of the countries. Okay, we're going to continue with a couple more formulas over here. So let's have a look. Let's go back to our power pivot. Go back here. And the next one we want to look at is 
or cost. Okay, so now with cost, what we're going to do is again, we're going to do a formula. I'm going to do it a little bit different to the way we did it before. Remember last time I just clicked on the field names, but this way I'm actually going to press the left square key. And when you've got this left square key, you then show a list of the fields that are available to you. In this case, what I want to do is I actually want to take my unit price, which is my cost. And again, I'm going to multiply it by my order. And then you can see I used O and it just picked up the field. So I can now say unit price multiplied by my order quantity, and that will also work. So there we have the calculation being done. I can click on cost there. And again, I can do my formatting. And that's been added. And again, we could do another one over here and say, I want to see the profit. And in this case now, I want to take my sales less my cost. And again, now if I press my left square bracket and type S, you'll see that sales actually now appears as a field that I can use in my calculations. So I can actually say my sales less my cost because these are now two new fields that can be used. So profit is now sales minus my cost. There I have it, the result. And if I go back to Excel, and if I take the sum of sales, take that out, go down, I could now use my profit in there, and you'll see now it will be calculated. Could have my sum of sales and my sum of profit, both within there. So these are new fields that are created as part of the actual data set itself. However, we could also create new fields for different purposes. So currently I've got my different business segments that are being used as slices. So as we're choosing this, we're using the business segment to filter the data that has been shown. But what happens if I wanted to say filter this by different years? Now currently, if I go back to my data set, you'll see that I have a sales date, which has got the year in it, but I do not actually have the year that I could use as a field. Okay, so we're going to create a new field over here. Let's say we're going to create a field called yeah, and in this case now we're going to use a function, same as you would in Excel. We're going to say equals year, and we're going to do it of the sales date. So I'm now just choosing equals year of the sales date. Close my bracket, close the parentheses, then complete the formula. Now when I click on that, just the same as happened with the other calculations, it's now populated the year as a result for every row in my data set. Again, if I go back to Excel now, and let's say now I went to my pivot table and we said analyze and said insert slicer. You'll now see that I have a year that can be used as a slicer. So when I click on OK now, I now have the different years in my data set. So I could say I want to see bikes in 2003 or 2002, 2003 again. So very easy to bring this into your analysis. Just another example I could show. I'm going to remove this year as a slicer. I could bring it into my pivot table. So I could actually say that I wanted to see my subregion, let's say my sum of profit, and I want to see my columns on different years. And again, now it can be used in my analysis. So very easy to add new fields into your data set using those DAX calculations. So we're going to continue to look at the concepts of calculations in Power Pivot. So, so far we've seen that we've created a calculated column and it produced a result for each row that is in the data set. So in this case, we now we've got each row for sales and we've got a calculation. Now, if we go back and let's just create a new pivot table, let's say we want it in a new worksheet. So again, let's say we're going to use our sub region and let's just create our sales again. So what's happening here is every time that we go through our sales, it's going through and it's calculating all 60,919 rows to give us a result for the sales for the different um, countries that we've got here. So let's go back to our data model and have a look at the bottom over here. Now what we'll see over here is something called the calculation area. Now the way that this works is it creates something called measures. Now measures work in a different way to the way a calculated column works. So what a measure does is it produces a result for the entire data set calculation. So it's kind of the same as in Excel, if you had a range of data, say from A1 to A60,919. 60, and at the bottom, you had one cell. 
And in the cell at the bottom, you said equal sum of the sales from A1 to A1,060,919. And what it would do in that one cell is it would then calculate the total result for the range. This is really what a measure is doing. So if we put, say, a measure in here, let's say we have created a measure called total sales. And when we're doing a measure, what we do is we actually use the, let's just correct that. Uh, we use the colon. So we say colon equals. So we've got to give it a field name and we say colon equals. And in this case, we're going to say sum. We're going to open up our parentheses and we're going to say we want to sum the training sample to sales column. So it's taking all of these fields now and it's now actually calculating the result for the total. Again, we can format this. Okay, so once we finish the formatting, you'll see now that we have our total sales. And in one cell now, we've got the total sales for everything that is in the sales column. Now let's go back to Excel. Let's just see the result over here. So we've got our summer sales over here, which is all our sales from our, from our calculated column. However, now we'll see that there is a new field called total sales, and it's got an FX icon over here telling me that it's a measure. I want to drag it down to sum of sales. You'll see that I get exactly the same result. It's calculating exactly the same. However, there is a bit of a difference. With sum of sales, you'll see if you right click, you've got your summarized values back. Now, I could change the sum of sales to be an average of sales, or I could say that I would want to say this as a max of the sales. And you'll see then it will change the calculation because it's got each of the results within the calculated column. However, if I go to total cells, you'll see that my summarized values by is actually grayed out. So all the, summar the, the total cells can do is actually do a sum. But remember, that is what our formula said. Okay, so we've got a max of cells, sum of cells. Let's just remove those. Let's keep our, t sum of our total cells. Okay, so now that we've got our total cells, let's go back over here and see how we can work with this. Now, so let's say, for example, we wanted to now know the number of customers that we were working with. Again, I could do this as a measure, and let's call this number of customers. Again, because it's a measure, we use a colon equals. And if we were in Excel now, we would use a count a function, so counting text, and we would say we want to count our customer field. And when we produce this result, we get the number of rows that are actually in the data set, which is 60,919. Now, I know this is not my number of customers, because over here I can see that I have my same customer more than once. And that means that the customer should only be counted once, not multiple times. So what Power Pivot's got is a function actually called distinct count. Now, this allows me to count the customer once and not again. So let's change this function and say we want to use the distinct count function. So we're going to say distinct count. Okay, let's just change that again. So we're going to say number of customers, distinct. You see distinct count now comes up with one of my functions. I choose that and I go to my customer field. And now when I calculate this, it actually gives me the correct number of customers at 633. So I actually have 633 customers in my data set. So that's great. Let's go back to Excel now and let's see how many customers each country has. So again, we can use our pivot tables, use our total number of customers, and there we now have our number of customers. Now let's say we wanted to do another calculation, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to take this cell divided by this cell. Now in Excel, that would be pretty easy. We would just go C4 divided by D4, and we would get a result, and we'd be able to copy that down. Now because we're working within a data set though, what we've got to do is create a formula that allows us to do this calculation divided by this calculation. Now, because we have both of these fields at the aggregate function, what we can do is we can get it to calculate at that level. So let's go back a bit and let's go across over here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function then called average sales per customer. Again, colon equals. In this case, we're going to use another new function in DAX that you won't see in Excel called divide. And the divide function allows us to do division and if we come back with a divide by zero error, it'll actually put zero as the answer, not an error. So in this case, now we want to take on total uh, numerator, which is my total sales. And we want to take our number of customers. Now you see, because I've defined these as measures, 
I can now use them actually in this average sales. So I can actually use me measures in my new calculation. I want to press enter on this, get average sales per customer, make it a bit wider. And this will show me for the entire data set. Again, we can format this. And there we go, we now got the average sales per customer for the entire data set. And again, we can go back to Excel. And there we have it now as a new function that we can add to our pivot table. And it will now calculate in the context of each country what is the total sales divided by the number of customers to give us the average sales per customer. However, because it's its own field now, I can use it in other contexts. So it doesn't have to be in the context of, um, we could actually use it in business segment. Now it would calculate the average sales per customer in the business segment. Or you could use model. So very useful to do. Another very useful feature in Power Pivot is the ability to create subsets of your data. So let's go back to our Excel over here. And let's go back to say looking at our subregions. So our subregions was really showing as a list of our different countries. So over here, what we could see is that we've got a couple of European countries. So we've got United Kingdom, Germany, and France. Now, what if we wanted to run a report and we only wanted those three countries to be in the report? Now, you could use your filter and you could exclude all the other options, but this is a bit painful and a bit tiresome after a while. So we're going to look at the fact of creating a set that allows us just to have these as European. So we're going to click on Analyze over here. We're going to look at our field items and sets. And you can see here, you can create a set based on the row item. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to call this European. And over here now, well, the best way to, to work with this is actually to remove the items that you don't want. So I'm going to delete Australia, Canada, and the United States. I'm going to keep all because we want to see the totals. So we want to see the total of the grand total. So I'm going to click on OK on that. And you'll see now that it now shows the calculation for the total average sales per customer. I just want to show something over here. So we're just going to replace this with the total sales. Let's have that. Meanwhile, while we're looking at that, you can see over here now it's created a new folder and we got now the sets underneath here. So as you create new sets, it would then uh, show the sets under here and you just drag them in. So if I took row out here and said, oh, I want to see my total sales by year. Okay, that's great. But now I want to actually see the European set. I could actually just grab in there and you could now see that European has now been used in the column. So very easy to work with. Yeah, let's just put it back into rows. Got a total set. However, one of the issues you'll see with my pivot table is now is that my grand total is clearly not showing the total for the sets. So one change you need to do is just right click on your amounts over here and you'll see something called pivot table option. Now pivot table options, what we do is we actually go across to our totals and filters and you'll see there's an option called include filtered items and set totals. And we're actually going to turn that off and click OK. And now you'll see that we'll get the correct total being shown with our filtered items. But sets are a really good way of being able to create subsets of your data, very useful to use. Another really powerful feature in Power Pivot is the ability to create relationships between data sets. So we're going to create a new Power Pivot here. We're going to bring in two new data sets. We're going to look at in some human resource data. So what we're going to have is we're going to have an employee master data, which tells us how many employees there are in the company, which department they are. And then also we're going to have some training data. And in the training data, we're going to see how many training courses the different employees have been on and also what the cost is of these different training courses. Okay, so we're going to go back to Power Pivot. We're starting off with a new Excel of worksheets over here. So just click Power Pivot, Manage, and we're going to load that. And you'll see as well, we're going to go from other sources again. And again, I'm going to use an Excel file for this one. So I'm just going to bring in an Excel file called Employee Master. Okay, so I've got the Employee Master. I'm going to click OK on that. Use first rows, column headers. Click on Next. Now in this case here, it actually picks up that there's more than one table or there's more than one sheet of data I'm going to use. So in this case, I'm going to use the sheet of data that's the master sheet and also the workshop sheet. So I'm going to use those two sets of data here. Now click on Finish and let that load. Okay, you can see that that's loaded successfully and click on OK. Now in my Power Pivot now, you'll see down at the bottom, I've actually got two tables of data. 
So the first table of data is my master data. And you can see I've got 50 rows in here. I've got my employee names, I've got the birth dates, I've got ages, marital status, gender, length of service, department, salary, job grades. So there's some different information over here. I've also then got a second table called workshops. And on this, what we've got is we've got the start date, the course name, and also the employee ID. So the employee ID now ties back to the master and it will then link to the fact of the employee who then went on the training. So if we had employee ID 25, and that's Phyllis Allen on our workshops over here, we can see that employee ID 25 went on to a communication expert. Our oh, communication expert was the supply. Course name was actually communication workshop. So that is how the two are tied together, is that in this workshop, we actually, workshop file, we actually keep a record of each employee ID so that we can see which courses they've been on and then that is coming and links to the master. Now one thing that's very important about relationships in Power Pivot is the fact it must be a one-to-many relationship. So in our workshop here, we can have an employee going on many different workshops. It can go to many different training courses. However, in the master, there is only one record of that employee. The employee cannot exist more than once. So very important, many to one. For those of you who have used VLOOKUPs, you should be quite familiar with this concept of linking to, to one record, one master record. Okay, so we've got the data over here, and now we want to create a relationship. But before we get there, I just want to show what's going to happen when we have no relationship between the two tables. So let's say I created a pivot table now, and I've got this cost field. And I want to know what is my total cost. And let's say I want to do it by my different departments. So I want to know what is my training cost for each of the departments. So I've got a pivot table, and we'll create a new pivot table. And you'll see now that we actually have two tables in our pivot tables. So my master, I've actually now got my department that I want to find. Okay, so we've got the department field, we've dragged it down into rows, and we go back up again, and we now want to look at our workshops, and we have our cost field over here, so we're dragging down our cost value. Now you can see the first off that our pivot table now shows me the exactly the same result in every cell. So it's showing me there's an issue, there's a problem. But also over here, it's telling me that a relationship between the tables may be needed. I'm going to cancel this because I want to, instead of automatically create it, I'm going to create it myself. Okay, so we're going to go back to our data model, click on manage. And what you'll see is that there's actually a diagram view over here. So currently we've been in the data view. Now we're going to move across to the diagram view. In the diagram view, it shows me both tables and a list of the fields that are in the two tables. Now, when it comes to creating a relationship, the easiest way of doing this is actually to drag a between the two fields that create the relationship. Now, we know that employee ID and employee ID over here are actually the linking fields. So I'm going to click on employee ID, drag it across, and you'll see that once it's over the other employee ID, I click on that, and now it creates a relationship showing that there's a relationship. There's one one over here, which is correct, and there's many over here, which is the wildcard. Okay, so this has actually now created the relationship. Let's go back to Excel and see what's happened. Now you see automatically now, because it's got the relationship, it can actually now create a understanding of what the training cost is for each of the different departments. Okay, so let's create another table and see how that works. I'm gonna go back to our data model. Let's create another pivot table over here. Let's say it's going to be an existing worksheet. And I would just want to put it next to here. Okay, I'm going to click OK on that. Let's say now we want to go to our master sheet. We want to take our employee name. And now we want to go back to workshops. And we want to take our cost so we can see the cost for the training. Now we have the sum of the cost for each of our employee names over here. Also, I want to know how many courses they've been on. So let's do a count of the number of course names. So we've got the counts of the course names now also being shown. So you can see once we've got the relationship between the two tables, I can now use any of the fields from the two tables to create my actual power pivot model here. Another option we've seen earlier was the fact of using a slicer. So let's say I go back to my analyzer over here, insert slicer. And let's say in this case, we want to use job grade as a slicer. So we create job grade. Now, if I wanted to see all admin jobs or people in admin jobs, you'll see now it filters this table. But remember earlier, we had to make a bit of a change. We had to use the slicer tool options over here and report connections. And then we said we want to see both our pivot tables. 
Now you'll see then it will now actually slice to show only the admin job grades. And you can see now obviously these two amounts, so some of the cost will tie up. And it makes a very powerful way of moving between the two tables. Let's just add another field over here. Uh, let's turn the filter off. Let's create a, let's just go back to the table. Let's use this one. Analyze, let's insert a slicer for gender. So there's a gender over here now. We've got female and male. Let's say we want to see all the males. And again, just remember to do your report connections, both pivot tables. Now we'll see we've got all the males. Let's say we want to see the ones in management. And now you can actually filter between the two. So very easy to work between your relationships. Just want to revisit the power pivot over here and manage. And under design, you'll actually see there's an option to manage your relationships. If you click on manage relationships, you can edit it over here. And you just see that it's created a relationship between the two employee IDs. And those are the two tables that have been used. So you'll find the drag and drop is actually easiest to use, but you can use your manage relationships as well. So I just wanted to say a really big thank you for taking the time to go through our complete introduction to Excel Power Pivot video. Really hope you enjoyed it and seen the power of what Power Pivot can actually do for you in Excel. So you're really going to find that Power Pivot will help your data analysis and help us with much bigger data sets to be able to come up with new insights and information. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And I hope that you will join us for the other complete introduction to videos that we will be doing.